Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Soul Shape Podcast, where we focus on your spiritual fitness, or what we like to call our energetic self-care. We are sisters and the co-founders of Soul Shape, a quantum wellness app designed to make it easier and accessible to find healing practitioners in the energy healing world. world. We want to have soulful conversations about spirituality and wellness, and whether you're dabbling or taking a deep dive into energy healing, and whether it's finding an oracle or a shaman, a life wellness coach or an intuitive guide, energy worker, or nutritionist, we want to introduce modalities and healing practitioners to you one by one. So it's time to get into Soul Shape, where wellness starts within. My name is LJ Woodard. This is my sister, Leslie Bennett. And what are we talking about today, Leslie? Today, we are talking about cultivating. Hmm. With I know, right? Cultivating. It's very mysterious. What are we cultivating? <laughs> um, we're here with um, Samantha Ray Mitson of Marichi Wellness and well, Yoga and Wellness. Wellness yoga, and yoga and wellness. Yoga and wellness. Laura, tell us about Samantha. I cannot wait to do the major introductions. Samantha Ray Mifsa, she is one of my BFFs. Truly, truly. Love her. <laughs> Meet Samantha Ray Mifsud of Marichi Yoga and Wellness, a beautiful soul and wellness practitioner that specializes in one on one yoga, meditation, personal training, and coaching sessions. Marichi Yoga and Wellness aims to heal and strengthen the mind, body, and spirit through education, wellness, and art. Yes, we love that. No two sessions are ever the same because no two individuals have exactly the same needs. She is pure joy, and I love her because our sessions, because I've I personally use Samantha Ray Mifsud, include Broadway choreography. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and that's our little thing that we do. Mm-hmm. So um, Samantha Ray Mifsud, welcome to the Soul Shape Podcast. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me. I'm happy to be here. And should we just jump into, should we talk about cultivating? Sure. To cultivate or not. What does that really mean, Leslie? Where are we going with this? Um Why are you asking me? We have someone who would love to talk about it, (laughs) like our guest. Um, So when you say cultivating, I mean, it's such a broad Mm -hmm. term, right? Right. You know, we could be cultivating success. We could be cultivating friendships. We could be cultivating, you know, money in our bank accounts. You know, what what is it that we're cultivating? When you say cultivating, Mm -hmm. where, where, where does that take you? Me personally? Or, or <laughs> yeah, sure, let's start with you. Let's start with sure, you. Sure, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. So I think the word cultivate <clears throat> means to use a little bit of intention, effort, or grit to acquire something that is desired. And that just came to me now. Wow. <laughs> um, but for me, I feel like for so long... For so many years within my lifetime, there have been things that I've desired that didn't necessarily come to me naturally. Um, And through trial and error, it seemed that if I placed an intention behind a little bit of effort presently, always staying present and doing that, Um, I was able to cultivate the things that I desired most. And through the practice of yoga throughout the past 15 years or so, I've been taught continuously by my students because as a yoga instructor, so to speak, I always like to think of myself as the student first Mm -hmm. um, and learn from my own, Mm -hmm. you know, groups or individuals with whom I'm working. And I have found that using physical effort or strength to practice ultimately leads to stronger, more intentional, more present results. What do you think about that, Leslie? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Because, and I'm asking you this, Leslie, because we had a little conversation the other day, didn't we, about cultivation? We did. And so we're just like, I need to change my whole life now. (laughs) Exactly. After I heard Leslie's spiel, I said to myself, oh, no, I think I'd need to reassess. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So beautiful words, uh, because I think one of the things that I've learned in spiritual practice um, is and, and you hear Esther Hicks, who's a famous law of attraction. She's, yes, she's pretty well known. You know, you you 
have an idea, you send it to the vortex, and then you just sit and receive, right? Absolutely. And, and when you talked about, we talked about effort, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so if you're in the flow, you shouldn't have to effort, right? right? So it's really about manifesting or cultivating mm-hmm. a belief. And then if you want to say cultivating as sort of embellishing it into your body or em- I'm missing a word here, but sort of invoking it throughout your belief system, through your physical system, then then you've cultivated in that manner as opposed to efforting mm-hmm. into the cultivation. Because when I think of the word cultivate, I think of the word, at, I think of it more as planting seeds. Right. Right. And, and we can do that because mm-hmm. what is manifestation but planting seeds? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we, if you plant the seed, do you have to, you know, water it? Do you have to, you know, feed it food? What do you have to do? And that feels like efforting. Mm-hmm. But if you listen to some of the spiritual teachers that are out there, right. they're like, just stop. You don't have to do any <laughs> mm-hmm. effort. It's supposed to come to you. And if you that's that's when you're in the flow. Right. You know, and so that's why I was going, you know, I'm all for efforting. If that gets you there, I support it. But if you really take yourself to the next level, mm-hmm. then maybe you don't need to effort so much. And that might be what's hindering you or slowing you down mm-hmm. from what you are seeking. Because we're so trained, right? If you want to achieve something, you have all these steps you have to take. You know, you have to create a plan and you have to fund it. And then you have to, you know, do all these steps to get to, to where you need to go. And so that's what the conversation was that we had a few days ago. Right, right. And the the term effort kept coming up, like you said, and opening ourselves up to receive after manifesting or setting an intention to, you also use the word accept, yeah. receive. And allow. Allow. I like those words um, for universal love to unfold as it's supposed to. Yeah. And I think that's beautiful. And it really got me thinking a lot about my own spiritual practice and where I've been on my journey. I've um I've experienced the Unity Christ Church of Wilmington, Unitarian Universalist philosophy, Islam, Judaism, Catholicism. I grew up Catholic. I went down a path of discernment for whether or not I would even enter the sisterhood and become a nun at one point. Wow. <laughs> yes, I'm Get me to like, the nunnery. <laughs> I'm quoting Shakespeare. Sorry. Be, I'm Get just going to say this, nunnery. not trying to be blasphemous, but you'd be the hottest nun. <laughs> Well, at, the, no. <laughs> at the nunnery. <laughs> well, I say all of this to say, like, I have, I've been pouring effort and, um, and on the search, on the search, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than opening up myself to this abundance of love that surrounds us already and can envelop us and enfold us if we allow it mm-hmm. and if we accept it and receive it, um. And just going back to yogic philosophy and planting seeds, Mm -hmm. I actually, it's interesting that you just mentioned that because I was referencing my book, The Holy Science um, by Swami Sri, and I would love to read this little passage from page seven of his introduction. Go for it. Okay. And he says... um, and I and this really spoke to me too, just as an aside, really quickly, because my business name Marichi Yoga and Wellness um, comes from the Sanskrit word Marichi, which means the goddess of light, the goddess of dawn, when light overcomes darkness or triumph over evil. And as I was reading here, so from Swami Sri, he says that the sun also has another motion by which it revolves around a grand center, which is the seat of the creative power, Brahma, and that's the universal magnetism. Brahma regulates Dharma, our purpose, which is the mental virtue of the internal world. So when the sun, in its revolution around its dual, comes to the place nearest to the grand center, 
The seat of Brahma Dharma, the mental virtue, becomes so much developed that man can easily comprehend all, even the mysteries of spirit. And that kind of speaks to what you and I were speaking about the other day, living on the spiritual plane or living in the energetic realm Mm -hmm. rather than always living in the physical. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes down to it, the physical isn't really what matters most. Yeah, we were talking about how to let energy serve us, Mm -hmm. right? So we're so into the idea that we need to raise our vibration in order to get the energy. Yes. And 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 so that efforting is mm-hmm. almost as if we're battling with ourselves. Right. We're we're creating this perpetual motion mm-hmm. not getting anywhere. And if we just dropped that and let the energy serve us, then as you said, the seed becomes the magnet mm-hmm. that we just planted. Right. Yeah. Right. Don't force it. Don't push it. Don't push it. Exactly. Just allow it. Allow. And Patanjali, Gosh. one of the greatest teachers of yoga, especially within our time, I'm going to reference some more words. So she, right, came, so okay. she came prepared. She, she was like, also after that a conversation. Teacher. She's oh. like, I got the books. I'm going to quote. I'm going to bring it back to Leslie. She's That's also an elementary like school say, hey, teacher. Can you I'm, tell? <laughs> Yes. I was. All right. Yeah. And I also taught at a Catholic school. Yeah. If you can believe it. And um, yes, speaking I can. of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. You were there. I was there. LJ actually brought me there. Yeah, I did. <laughs> through the drama program. Yeah, I, I created We go the way theater. back. Yeah. I'm not used to be on screen as much, but I like theater. Yeah. I like being on stage. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, let's, go, let's <laughs> get digress. on topic. Back on topic. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, Patanjali. References. That name again? Can you repeat it? (laughs) Patanjali. Excuse you. (laughs) The Garden of Eden. And if we think about the Garden of Eden, especially in our Western culture, we know what happens there, right? Mm -hmm. Bad. Mm -hmm. Sin. Mm -hmm. We took the apple. We ate it when we weren't supposed to. But... Did we really? (laughs) That's the question. See? And here it says, the tree of knowledge has indeed yielded much fruit of great variety, sweet, poisonous, bitter, and wholesome, according to our use of it. But is it not more imperative than ever that we cultivate Mm. the tree and that we nourish its roots? Oh, my gosh. I'm a yogi. You are. Here we are. (laughs) And thinking about yoga, too, as another aside— so often, especially in America, we think of when we hear the word yoga, we often think, oh, fancy poses, mm-hmm. strong, flexible, yeah. mobile people. Yeah. That's not really mm-hmm. what yoga is. What does yoga mean to you? Connection. <laughs> yeah. And that's really, um, if we think about the Sanskrit word, Sanskrit word, yoga, it means union. It means connection. It comes from the root word yuj, or to connect. And really what what that means to me, LJ, to answer your question, is to use or unite our mind, our body, our spirit as one being so that we are more able to connect with God, the divine, mm. universal love from which we were created. And that's it. And that is the ultimate goal. That's elevation. That's samadhi. And enlightenment. Yeah, I mean, I feel, because I'm not a a churchgoer, but I do feel closest to source, you might Mm -hmm. say. Yeah, on the mat. I mean, it's because it's their closest connection to yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you go within, and yeah, sure, the movement helps you, you know, discover a lot about yourself and to go inward and to feel so many wonderful things, but yeah, I would have to agree with that. <laughs> I actually want to take it deeper. Oh, go, Leslie. <laughs> Please do. Go there. <laughs> go Please there. go there, Sounds Leslie. like a Madonna no, song. Think, Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. No, I think what you described mm-hmm. could be, you know, with the connection, you could be creating resonance. Yes. 
Yes. And then we go into the energetic plane. Okay. And then, you know, during that conversation that we had, and I'm sorry, folks, you weren't there, but, um, <laughs> you know, we're trying to bring as much of it is in as we can. I had a moment talking about the energetic plane and mm-hmm. quoting Yogananda mm-hmm. on that within and without. Right, right, right. Please go back yeah, there. Yeah. Yes, this is so because good. Because I just yeah. got that. Yeah. I didn't understand the with and without. Uh-huh. And what I was doing was I was explaining the marriage between the physical cells and the and the and the energetic self by, you know, using the the po- a particular pose. And I don't forget probably warrior. Warrior two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which, one of the warriors. Warrior she two. put her arms out like a and beautiful I, goddess. I, I, yeah. and that's warrior two. <laughs> okay. And so I was saying, talking about the marriage between the physical and the energetic. And, and I said, it's almost like what Yogananda said, within and without. Sort of like within the body and, and without reaching out to our energetic bodies. Right. And then I said, oh, I just got that when, mm-hmm. he's, when Yogananda said that. Because I hadn't put that together. I'm like, what do you mean within, without? Like, I love myself and, you know, without, I didn't quite get it until we were having that conversation about the difference between the physical realm and the energetic realm and the marriages that can occur. And now that we've had this conversation, I can see how yoga creates that bridge or that intersection or that connection between Mm -hmm. both and create this vast sort of vortex in and of itself, which I thought was super cool. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yokes it all together. Yokes it all together. Yoke is another word that comes up if we look at the root of yuge, and I always think that's kind of cool too. How did you start? What made you fall in love with yoga? Where did it, it's like, what, what are the roots? I mean, beyond, mm-hmm. before like the certifications and all that kind right. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. You, so let's go it, back. It definitely started as a physical practice for me. Yeah. Like for most people, right? Correct. You know, because mm-hmm. when you first go into yoga, you don't understand a lot of the philosophies. You kind of do, you might know, because it's, it's a lot more popular when I started. I did it in law school when, back in the <laughs> 80s, and people thought I was crazy going mm-hmm. to yoga. But, um, you know, what was really good is, I, you know, because you're over a computer, you're scrunched down, yes. yoga allows you to expand, at least in here, open those shoulder blades, you know. Um, so, yeah, so I get the physical and the benefits just of that alone. If that's all as far as you went, that's great, too. It so, is. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. But, like, how going. did it, okay. like, okay, so, yes, yeah. the physical, but did a friend bring it up to you? You're like, oh, I've always wanted to do it. Like, mm-hmm. what what are the roots of your, your yoga, what are your yoga origins? My <laughs> yoga origins. So... I, when I was in high school, I was really into physical fitness and I was on the track team at my high school. I was a cheerleader. I was into musical theater and my family was a member of a local gym. And one of my best friends, Brittany, and I would go to the gym all the time together and take classes. And I've always been drawn to, I always wanted to be older than I am. (laughs) Even when I was a young child, that's another conversation too, right? Like old souls. We share that. Yeah. Uh-huh. We share that. Yes. Yes. So I would go to at the gym. I would see all of these little ladies or like middle aged women when I was in middle school and high school. My age now. <laughs> And they would be (laughs) walking to these little group fitness classes. And I thought that was so cool. And I said, I'm going to take some of those. So I started with aerobics and step aerobics and who knows what else. Uh, Zumba. uh, Yeah. I don't even think Zumba was a thing yet. But (laughs) eventually, yes. It's like very Jane Fonda. Yeah, Jane Fonda. So then, oh, that song was in my head earlier today, too. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So I I saw yoga on the schedule one day, and I was like, oh, that would be cool. Like, I think that's so cool. That's all I thought. I went to it. It was a yin yoga class, and we so we would hold postures for three to five minutes. And I went to that class, and afterward, I felt so good. I felt so relaxed. And so I started attending that specific class weekly, Um it was pretty westernized. Mm-hmm. It was in the, the gym. Yeah, right. But yeah, we didn't really know what yoga. I, there I don't, was no gong or little. There was no gong. <laughs> like there was no incense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was no um, no conversation about what we were doing energetically, spiritually, or mentally. Um, but 
I knew it felt really good. Mm -hmm. So I continued to practice physically. And I would quiet my mind. And sometimes emotions would arise. I'm like, huh, this is interesting. So that that was my first introduction. And then was when I was in college, kind of continued along that path. Mm-hmm. I knew it felt really good. Mm-hmm. But I had a couple of teachers in college that spoke a little bit more about Yoga Sutras, Patanjali, and the philosophy behind it on a very high level. So that interested me. And then after I graduated um, for undergrad, I was in a relationship that was a little bit toxic, a romantic relationship. And when that relationship ended after about a year's time, I threw myself into hot yoga Bikram back then. Mm-hmm. We they don't do that, that anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You did that. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, and there so was intense. something yeah. incredible that happened mm-hmm. to my spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, I cried in nearly every class. I went every single day, mm-hmm. 30, 30 days for $30, you know, one of those deals. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, gotta love a deal. Yeah, gotta love a bargain. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and then I moved to New York and I moved to New York City. And while I was there, I said, okay, Bikram is speaking to me for whatever reason. It was a series of postures, no music, carpeting on the floor, sweating like nobody's business. And it it was a cleansing. It was a purification. It was a healing to just shake all of that toxicity out of my body first, Mm -hmm. and somehow that released the emotions I needed to release at the time, and there was a spiritual reset for sure. Um, I took a deeper dive into it from there, started learning about it, started reading about it. Um, About a year and a half later, I moved back to Wilmington, North Carolina. I started practicing with Macy Cole, here in Wilmington, who suggested that I take her 200-hour yoga teacher training. And within that teacher training, that was at the same time period in which I was discerning whether or not to become a nun. This is so amazing to me. (laughs) Non-yoga teacher, (laughs) non-yoga teacher. I know what I would choose. What would you choose, Leslie? Yoga teacher. Oh, okay. (laughs) Well, the bottom line for me was you're so Julie it, Andrews. You're like oh, Maria von Trapp. So, <laughs> <my dear. laughs> um, Remember, the nunnery is not an escape. Remember, like she was like, right. yeah, yes. it's not an escape. I needed to sing. I yes. needed to dance. Not a place to hide, Maria. Yes. Well, and Climb I every mountain. thought that I would like to have a male partner someday. So that's. <laughs> That's another part of it, but okay. we won't go there. Anyway, um, so. <laughs> so so ultimately, I realized that it's all the same. Hmm. It's all the same. We are divine beings. We have been created out of universal love. When we're taught to pray the rosary, that's a form of meditation through which we call upon energetic fields or saints and I could this could be considered really blasphemous so I apologize to the church and (laughs) but it's true it's it's universal love God is love Jesus Christ is within all of us we are all God we are all divine You're divine just as I'm divine, just as Jesus is divine. And we can all strive to embody that divinity, which is beyond our humanness. Well, that's why we say namaste. I see the God in you. My God in you blesses the Mm -hmm. God in me blesses the God in you. Okay, sorry. I messed that line up. (laughs) That's all right. But I think that's the ultimate truth that... I at least, that speaks to me. That's true for me. And if I'm really honest with myself, I see the God in you. Mm. I see the God in you. (laughs) And I 
work to see the God in me every day. Mm. And when we think about a physical practice like yoga, so yoga asana, the postures, the poses mm -hmm. within yoga, it's so often related to physical fitness, but we're not just trying to get our bodies in shape. We're trying to get our souls mm -hmm. in shape. Yeah. And that's what yoga can help. Nice plug, by the way. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Available on the Soul Shape app. <laughs> Nice Download plug. the soul shape app. Um, Let's get into soul shape. Well, and so thinking about that, thinking about physical fitness, let's, let's start there. We do Pilates. Mm -hmm. We go running. Mm -hmm. We ride bikes. So why do we practice yoga? Mm. What are we practicing for? Question. Food for thought. What do you think? Okay, nice to put me on the spot because I put you on the spot two days ago. So. Glad it was you. <laughs> no. I'm looking into your eyes, yeah. Leslie. No, the panic. You've seen the panic. Oh my gosh, yes, no. No, it's actually a very interesting question. I think the, the practice is really going to that marriage that we talked about mm -hmm. maybe 20 minutes ago between. You, the energetic and the physical, right? You're, yes. We're practicing to get into resonance because we're not always into resonance. That's, mm -hmm. you know, I would love to be in resonance all the time, but that's not how the human works Experience. in this yeah. in this realm right now. I right. think we're going to be better soon. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you don't practice riding a bike. You just do it, right? Because yeah. there's a emotion to it. You ride a bike. Yeah. I think a practice because it goes deeper, right? You don't go deeper into cycling. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could get better at it, mm -hmm. but you don't go deeper into it. Yes, in, in some of these these um, activities yeah. that you mentioned, there can be a meditative state to it. Absolutely. So, you know, it is interesting that we do call it a practice, but I think it's because it's it's it goes beyond the intention of the activity, right? It's the... It's the cultivation. Mm -hmm. Hey, brought that back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the cultivation of, you know, bringing everything from within and without. And yes. I'm going to go back to Yogananda, right? Mm -hmm. It's bringing the inside world with the outside world. Yes. You don't necessarily do that running. You can somewhat with, because running can be meditative. But so that's mental. my thought. Mm-hmm. LJ, anything to add? Anything to LJ? No, in practice, I mean, I mean, it's sort of like practice, you know, from my standpoint because of my background in in, in performing, in performance in theater. Mm -hmm. It's something you have to rehearse, and so not just rehearse, but like um, rehearse my yoga. That um, sound you wouldn't say that, but like um, to get good at it. I mean, you're always actually the cool thing about yoga is you're always trying to like I don't know, do it the best you can, and it's sometimes. I don't even I want to say, say that. Best you can. Yeah, that's I don't just want to say that You want to honor where you are. Yeah, but sometimes I'm like going, oh, I'm better at this. Or, wow, that doesn't hurt anymore. Mm. Oh, wow, I can actually hold myself here now. I never used to be able to sit like this. Now I can't. I would never think I could like, you know, I was some person who could never like sit with my on my knees like this. Child's pose was you just know, not there were some things that just never felt like um I'm or a pigeon or whatever. I mean <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is it's like the practice of it, I guess it's that whole getting it's still I don't have the right word. It's not getting better at it, but it's like I'm it's not a goal. Yeah, it's Deeper. just I'm getting to, I'm I don't know. I'm just busy in my joy. That's what I'm doing. Ooh, I like that. Busy <laughs> in the busy joy. In I'm busy joy. in my joy. I usually don't like Damn the it. word busy, <laughs> but I love busy in my joy. I know. I'm That's just, beautiful. I'm being busy in my joy. Well, and I'll I'll give you an answer that I was taught throughout my yoga teacher training. And what where I want to start is the fact that each of those verbs that we mentioned to go, to ride – to rehearse. do, rehearse, <laughs> they all take effort. And so that's hey. what really made me start thinking about, well, yoga takes effort. And I would challenge everyone to think about the fact that we're practicing yoga right now, if we choose to. Right. I am. I'm practicing being in harmony at all times, I hope. 
unless I forget. <laughs> but namaha. <laughs> um, and I think that when we were speaking the other day, Leslie, it reminded me that oftentimes in our metaphysical discussions, whether it's with you, with LJ, with folks at the Conscious Life Expo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or um, our energy our energetic field, our, mm-hmm. yeah, um, that the word effort can have a negative connotation. Yeah. But I would like to ponder whether or not intention alone is necessary or if a special combination of intention plus effort might be the key to enlightenment yeah. um, in this human experience yeah, yeah. since we're yeah. not solely in the yeah. energetic realm yeah. right now. Yeah, I know. I have a thought on that. <laughs> Please, share. And I think it's it's impulse, right? Mm-hmm. So if I have an intention to have the best podcast ever, mm-hmm. you know, and if I was efforting, I would be like, oh, my God, I have to do this. I have to get the right social media. I have to have the branding. Mm-hmm. I have to do it. Mm-hmm. But if I let it go <laughs> mm-hmm. and planted the seed that I want the best podcast, right, and then all of a sudden, I see an ad for Signal Fire Media, our mm-hmm. producers. You know, <laughs> thanks, Rob. And then I call. I didn't mm-hmm. effort. Mm-hmm. I took an impulse. Mm-hmm. And I think that's different versus I'm, I got to research all the you know podcast producers in the country, and I want to find the best one. You know, that to me is efforting versus what comes into my field. Maybe someone hands me, oh yeah, here's a business card. I didn't do anything. Absolutely. Except called up Signal Fire Media and said, hey, you know, what's your deal? Mm-hmm. And they said, this is our deal. And we said, hey, yeah. Let's and so it was it. a match. So yeah. we followed the impulse. Mm-hmm. And so that seed became getting back magnet, mm-hmm. became the magnet for connecting us together. Right. That's what I would say. Yeah. I think that's really cool, too. And so do you think that impulse is key? I think allowing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the inspiration or the impulse to occur, because we're so into how am I going to make this happen, that we don't step back and allow. Right. And I think that that is because many of us are so worried about the future rather than living in the present. That's the other word, presence, because impulse, it's like, okay, well— What's the right decision? Well, if I'm present now and this feels good and this is right, then I'm utilizing the energy. Presence is mm-hmm. key too. So, um, I don't know. Impulse, present. You guys, I feel like we just need to have all these. All these words just need to be. Well, like, we need to be present on time. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's time cool. for the soulful stretch. Okay. Oh. As much as this was like super cool, and we could probably go for another hour on yes. this conversation and explore and cultivating thought and stuff. We call it where it's time for the soulful stretch, hmm. which is where we have um, maybe stretched a perception, stretch. a belief, a thought, an understanding. And so I think the, the stretch that um, I have from this conversation and interaction is that, you know, that cultivating is maybe simple as planting seeds. And that's my soulful stretch, something simple this time. I mean, that's the, the, the definition of to cultivate. Don't farmers cultivate their crops? Yeah, but they, they, <laughs> they, but they effort. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. They effort through watering and, and fertilizing. I take away th- my, from today my super, my, my soulful stretch. Do you know where we are? We're just I was like, where are we? <laughs> it's a super oh, soul it, Sunday. You know what? We haven't really said that Samantha has um, monthly beat-ups. Oh, that's right. We have to mention that, too. Because um, they're super cool, and I don't want to overlook that Yes. before we close. So Bef- before we close, I will definitely mention that. And I'll also say that for cult- for cultivating, it's like also like nurturing, growth, all that wonderful stuff that comes with cultivating. And what S- Samantha said about that whole thing, practice. Oh, my gosh, I love that. Practice yoga versus like we don't practice anything else. I just, that's, I don't know, that was really that was an eye opener. Enlightening. Enlightening. All right. A soulful stretch. What's your soulful stretch? Well, with gratitude for you, Leslie, for allowing this soulful stretch to occur, 
I am now more open to accepting and receiving rather than only efforting and driving and trying to gain whatever it is I'm after. Yeah. With regard to cultivation. That's a big shift. It's it's a big shift. And I still do believe that our physical bodies yeah. here on this earth are a fundamental part of who we are as humans. So I do think that there is something to be said about our humanness and about mm. trying to continuously honor our bodies while we're here. Mm -hmm. But your thought philosophy goes along with tantric yoga in the fact that, or the ideal, that our human bodies should be indistinguishable from our spirit. And if that's the truth, then so much effort, so much grit is not needed. Yeah. That's a biggie. Yeah. Yep. Intention and yep. acceptance right. and allowing. Stop battling. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And that's not an easy thing to do. I mean, it's going to take practice, right? You're going to go back to efforting, and then you're going to go, and then you'll, you know, go back yeah. to receiving, go back. And I did that. I've done that. Still doing that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Laura, do, you, do we need to? Well, in closing, I think we'll we'll wrap up this great episode of Soul Shape Podcast. We want to say thank you to Samantha Ray Mifsud. Thank you so much. Thank you, Signal Fire Media. Thank you, Rob. Um, thank you to our her, 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 Med meditation. Did I mess you up again? No, it, you're you're doing okay. a great reminder. <laughs> <laughs> um, I definitely want to. When I'm thanking Samantha, she is one of our top practitioners, and when I mean top, is that she does these great, so many great. She has tons of listings on the Soul Shape app, and what, one of the great things she does is she puts on on these mid month meetups. All of them have different themes. They could be music and mobility to um, Ayurveda to um, sunrise yoga to just all different types of different yoga. Great introductions. And I, I try to go to everyone every month. And mm -hmm. it's just it's open to everyone. And we all have a great time. And it's a great, it's a great community thing. It's it a is. really wonderful thing. So thank you so much, Samantha. And be sure to like. Follow and subscribe on Thank the Soul you. Shape Podcast, all that great stuff. We believe wellness starts within and unlock unlimited possibilities with energetic healing. Embrace that woo. We've been talking about so many wooful things that we invite you to dabble, dive, or discover your next healing experience on the Soul Shape app. All links available in the show notes. So we hope you've enjoyed our little soulful stretch. And join us again for another magical, soulful, energetic healing conversation on the Soul Shape Podcast. Did I get it, Leslie? You did really great once I interjected. Once you, you helped yeah, me. Once Thank I helped you. you. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Thanks Bye for having everybody. me. <laughs>